Good morning, my name is Zenas Kronting Mensa, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the state crime data set that I did for my mini project. So the idea of an abstraction is that it's a method that is used to simplify complex real situations that are given, and it's, simp it's simplified by using properties, properties of that abstraction. And the idea of, a, of an abstraction is that it removes things that are irrelevant to a situation, and then it makes it easier to understand and comprehend. So for this project, me and my group abstracted the real world problem of crimes in various states. Well, uh, it was specifically Virginia, but basically we abstracted uh, the real world problems in the state by using the state crime data set. Uh, the abstraction is put into a list of properties and some of these properties that I'm going to be using in this in this project relating to my data set is the property of state, the property of the rates of burglary, the property of the rates of robberies, and these are just properties that are related to the question that I want to ask. So the state is a string that a string property that represents the name of the crime that the state that the crime that reports in the state, which is needed to filter the data of my state of interest. And the rate of burglary is a numeric property, so I'm gonna get a numeric number whenever I do the coding. And it represents the average number of burglaries in a given location. The rates of robberies is a numeric property that represents the average number of robberies in a given location. So it's just kind of, it gives you back what it says. It says. This is my data map, which describes the structure of this abstraction. And this abstraction of, so the real world problem, the real world, the real world situation of crime data sets has been abstracted into a list of reports. And those list of reports has been abstract, like further abstracted into a whole bunch of properties that come that are placed in dictionaries. And each of these dictionaries have keys, and these keys are the properties of these abstractions, essentially. So either from these properties, I'm gonna get more dictionaries with other properties in it, or I'm probably gonna get to a type, which is like a string or integer or Boolean or something like that. But my abstraction here goes from the data set and I'll be looking at the property of data going into the property of rates down here and then into the property for either burglaries or robberies. So there are a few limitations for this uh, project just because you're, you're never going to get anything accurate when you're looking for data because not everything has been recorded ever since history started. Um, like, for example, if I was trying to find the location of where these data sets were given from, I wouldn't necessarily, like, figure out the exact location, because I'm not going to be given, as we can see here, from, as you can see from the other slide, uh, I'm only given a property of a state. I'm not specifically given a property of a city. So if I wanted to see, like, what the exact location of a crime was, I'm limited to that. I'm limited to what I can look for. I'm only limited to states. I can't look for countries. I can't look for cities. I can't I can't look for counties or anything like that because of the amount of information that the data gives me. For example, just the nature of the detail of the data is just something that limits us of figuring out exactly what we want can't really figure out everything. The, pre the precision of this abstraction may be a limit as well because there might be some missing data. Some of the years were not actually recorded, so it's like inconsistent years and it's not really correct for this. Also, another thing is um, if I wanted to know like how many 19 year olders were caught, in, caught from burglaries or anything like that, I would be able to answer the question because the properties from this abstraction that I did doesn't have anything to do with ages or 
whether they were caught or not, or things like gender or anything like that. So I, I'm only limited to the properties that are given in that abstraction for the data set. My question, um, so the, I've always wondered like, why is it, why is there so many different categories of a certain crime? And I, I just, it just always struck a question in my head and I just wanted to figure out why, you know, why do they, why do officials need these results? Why do they need to categorize certain specific crimes in the sense? And, you know, officials usually use these crimes, crime data to make things more efficient. They figure out how to administer more punishment more effectively and efficiently by just using the data sets that are given in the past for certain reports. Um, the reports are you just used to inform the public so there may be new methods to go about how to do things. And essentially the question that I want to ask is like why my officials want like something that law official enforcement officials might want to know is whether the relationship between the rates of burglaries and the rates of robberies in the state of Virginia like is there a relationship between them and that might be something that they might want to know just to inform, inform the public about or to just find methods about of how to go about so, like solving these problems and helping minimizing these issues in the state of Virginia. I use the scatter plot to try to figure out an answer to this problem. And a scatter plot is basically a type of visualization that just describes a relationship between two quantitative properties from an abstraction. And I decided to do rates of burglary and rates of robbery. And those are my two quantitative properties that are being in. And the answer that I figured out was that there actually they, there was a nonlinear type moderate positive correlation between these um, between these quantitative properties, and there were a few outliers in the in the list. But according to the visualization, pretty much there were there's a lot more burglaries occurring and pretty much as the burg the rates of burglaries increase it seemed like the rates of robberies were increasing as well so i mean we can confidently say that there there was actually a relationship and it could actually help reduce these crimes in the state of virginia if law enforcement decide to figure out what the relationship is and why is it the way that it is you know Few stakeholders from this, from the social impacts, impacts aspect of it, is like policymakers, you know, insurance companies, government agencies, police department representatives, investigative agencies, even the criminals themselves are affected by this. Uh, the research researchers in the academic, private, and public sectors. <laughs> The media, because the media likes likes to like just be nosy and get into everything. Um, policymakers at the local, state, and federal levels, they are able, they're affected by this data because they need accurate timing and timely data. They need they need this data to be accurate on the crime to inform budgetary like decisions about the amount of resources that could go into like certain policies that need to be put in place to limit these crimes, you know, like there are many agencies out there that are specifically for the sole purpose of stopping crime and policymakers need this information just so that they can figure out how they're going to go about putting things in place that will limit these crimes. Insurance companies are going to be affected by this because like if, if uh, let's say I'm a burglar and then I'm stealing something from somebody's house. If I steal something from their house, they're gonna need insurance because I just took their stuff. So insurance companies are affected by this because they're gonna have to replace the things that are stolen by these 
burglars and robbers, you know, like people, some people lose their lives in these situations. Like the insurance companies might have to pay life insurance to dependents and, and so many, uh, um, the media is impacted because they always have like constant drive trying to understand crime for appropriate uses. You know, they're trying to always inform the public about these things, investigative agencies, they use it to inform the, the public as well. So it's, they also get affected as well because if, the, if these results don't come out accurately, it just costs the whole chaos. So criminals may actually be conflict. No, not they may, they will be conflicted because the information that is given by the government is being used to stop them so like this information from this abstraction is being used to figure out methods to stop them if that makes sense so basically they're they're being affected by it whether it's indirectly or directly they're being affected by it um there may be conflict with with the government as well, you know, government and media, because maybe the media is putting out information that the government doesn't want to put out, just certain things like that. Um, yeah, and that's the end of the project, the honor code. And yeah, thank you for listening to my project. Have a great day.